but somehow we always managed to survive. Coach Barbetti surrounded himself with an excellent coaching staff with backs and ends. We had Leo Harrington, who is here tonight. Thank you, Coach, for coming. Ronnie Morell is also here tonight, and Peter Hall. Our line coaches were Ben Paziali and Dick Mangerian and Dave Hughes. Mangerian and Paziali also here tonight. Thank you all for coming. I'm very honored. Dick Mangerian was the uh, varsity line coach, and he made quite an impression on us. He used to growl at us as he chewed on our calves like they were turkey legs. <laughs> he even had us eat mud once, just so we would know what it was like to be uncomfortable. He was quite the philosopher and motivator, and collectively, they all pushed us physically and mentally beyond limits we ever thought were possible. As a member of the first senior class, we have been coached by him all three years. I've always felt a very special connection to Coach John Barbady. The commitment we made to each other, Coach, did in fact pay off, and we became winners as you promised us. In the fall of 1971, we became his first winning season and the foundation of many, many successful seasons that followed. <laughs> Barbady was also a very persuasive man, whether dealing with college recruiters or parents. He proved that to us his very first year at Watertown when he convinced my good friend and closest friend Joe Antonellis' dad to let him play football rather than help out with the family landscape business <laughs> on Saturday afternoon. Well, Joe went on to a full scholarship at Harvard University, and today is the Chief Information Officer at State Street Bank. <laughs> of the 16 starters on that 71 team, 12 went on to play college football, most with scholarships. Not too many coaches can claim that today. Your commit to us, commitment to us didn't end on Thanksgiving Day, Coach. And I, in particular, will never forget your help with the Winchenden School and Northeastern University. Thanks so much for being here tonight. It means a great deal to me, Coach Bobby. memorable moment in high school football actually was that ready game with the three block punts. <laughs> I received the game ball that afternoon in honor not often awarded to a lineman. The joy I shared in that locker room that day along with my teammates and my coaches will forever be etched in my mind. I was also a member of the outdoor track team during my high school years. I received another big push there. Not only from coaches Bill and Tony Flucka, but from seniors John Mushigan and Randy Luck, both excellent in throwing events. For three years, we scored points on a steady basis in the javelin, the shot put, and the discus. My senior year, <laughs> finishing order in the discus at every track meet except one was Santoyan, Lally, and the late Mark O'Hanian. The one time I did not come with first, my good teammate Dominic Lally beat me that day. But I've forgiven him since. <laughs> Our distances were very respectable, low to mid 130s. At the end of the season, Coach Bill Flecker challenged the three of us. I need you guys to throw over 140 feet. We said, why? We're winning every track meet. We're sweeping one, two, and three. He goes, I'll throw in an incentive of a Chinese food dinner. I threw 141 that day, and Don Lally threw 140. I don't know about you, Dominic, but that was the best Chinese food I ever ate. What can I say? Some people are motivated by food, some by money. Well, as you can see for yourself, my choice for the last 30 years is quite obvious. <laughs> At the league meet, I played.
placed second and qualified for the state in the discus, where I placed fourth. I was just thrilled to qualify for the states and just missed the New Englands by inches. None of this would have happened if not for the push of Coach Bill Flecker. In the fall of 72, I went away to the Winchenden School. It's located on the New Hampshire border, and it's in just above Gardner, Massachusetts. Winchenden was a good 60-minute ride from Watertown, but I think my old friend Eddie Russo, who's here tonight, still holds the record of 45 minutes. <laughs> and we never got pulled over. Winchenden was a very exclusive all-boys prep school. Classes were six days a week, and there was an average of six to eight boys in a class. The dress code was shirt and tie, and everybody played three sports. Coach Bob Aidey set up my interview with then headmaster Robert Ma, my dad and I. I'll never forget it was Easter Saturday, 1972. Mr. Ma gave us his overview of the school and its very rich history. He then interviewed my dad and I separately. And when we rejoined, my dad had only one question for the headmaster. How much? <laughs> Mr. Ma replied, $5,200. More than Harvard University charged at the time. My dad stood up, cordially thanked Mr. Ma, gave me the nod, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Ma said, please, please, Mr. Santoy and Michael, please be seated. He explained to my dad that he thought I would be just as good for the school as the school would be for me. And he said, whatever you can afford to pay is fine with me. My dad looked at me and said, how much money do you think you can make this summer? <laughs> I said, about $1,200. He looked at Mr. Ma and said, I can afford $1,200. <laughs> Near summer's end, my dad told my mom, he said, Nan, take him to Eastern Coat or Clothing over there at Coolidge Hill Road. Take them to the Eurasian boys, Johnny and Paul. I want you to dress them up, get them a suit, three or four sport coats, mix match, shirts, ties, trousers. I want them looking good. <laughs> when my dad came home from work that night and found out what my mother spent at Eastern <laughs> Coast, he had wished that he paid for the tuition of the Eastern School. <laughs> I may have been the poorest kid in that school, but I was by far the best dressed. <laughs> my two sisters are here tonight, Nancy Jane and Susan, along with my wife, Kathy. She then, at the Winchenden School, she was my girlfriend. They could probably tell you a few funny stories about me being a mama's boy. I know you can't believe that. I was a mama's boy. And I can assure you that all those stories are not true. During that year at Winchenden, it was the first time I had ever left home. I received frequent Sunday visits from my girlfriend Kathy and dozens of letters and phone calls from my sisters Susan and Nancy Chang. The timing always seemed to be perfect and just in time to head off a few homesick moments for me. Those letters, those calls, and those visits meant more to me, girl, than you'll ever know. And I thank the three of you very much. I had a great year at Winchenden, in, both scholastically and athletically. My grades and SAT scores improved considerably. In football, I made MVP and co-captain. I owe a great deal of thanks to my football coach there at Winchenden. His name was Sam Cook. He pushed me constantly, helping me to improve my skills as both an offensive and defensive tackle. I also enjoyed a fun winter in the Speedo Pop Dog. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was the slowest swimmer on the Winchenden swim team. <laughs> By the end of this year, I was the second fastest in the 50 meter freestyle race. I cut 13 seconds off my time and in doing so won the most improved award on the swimming team. It's incredible. I still don't think. 
I also played lacrosse in the spring. It threw me on the tennis courts when I showed up with my racket and my white shorts and my little white polo. The tennis coaches called the lacrosse coaches and said, we got one for you. <laughs> First time in my life I ever saw a cell phone. They came over, picked me up, carried me over to the lacrosse field and said, son, you're going to play lacrosse. I said, I don't want to play lacrosse. I said, son, you're going to play lacrosse. Just stand in the middle of the field. Anybody comes near your goalie, hit him. Just like football. It's simple. So this day, I believe that I have been the most penalized person in the history of the Richmond School for lacrosse, as far as penalty minutes are concerned. Well, spring came and went, and recruitment at several colleges I was really drawn to the University of Rhode Island for the oceanography program. I actually had a promise of full scholarship and everything was working out so well. But a month later, a letter came from Rhode Island and my world came crashing in. The letter said, we are overhauling the entire coaching staff and we are going to re-recruit all football candidates. I never got a, letter, a second letter for the second recruitment by the new football coaches. I was crushed, I was confused, and I was angry. I had already replied to three of the other colleges I got accepted to, and I accepted my refusals, and I didn't know what to do or who to turn to. My next trip home from Winchester, I went to see Coach John Bobby to explain what had happened. Again, worked his magic, and by Memorial Day weekend, I was accepted to Northeastern University and just, just thankful to be in college. I attended classes and worked part-time jobs my first two years there to pay for tuition, and I missed the 73 and 74 football seasons. By then, several of my Watertown High teammates had joined the NU football program. Fellow Hall of Famers Richie Marl and Manny Ragoulis were there as well as Eddie Kasabian, Bobby Collagio, who's both here tonight, Red Ryder, Brian Costello, and Gary Spence. They hounded me constantly about trying out for spring football, which happened to be a little mini three-week camp that we held in March. The biggest shove came from my old neighborhood pal, Eddie Kasabian. When I decided to try out for the team, Eddie was like my personal trainer. He pushed me hard physically eventually back into shape. He is one of the biggest reasons why I'm standing here before you tonight. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> that spring, I walked into the NU locker room at Parsons Field, feeling scared and desperate. Three, lakes, three weeks later, I walked out as one of the starting defensive tackles. Head coach Bo Lyons told me, if I was still a starting tackle after summer camp when the incoming freshman arrived, that he would offer me full tuition. Well, that's when the real army needed me kicked in. <laughs> and for once in my life, I did the pushing. Because I wanted it so, so bad. When September came, I was the starting right defensive tackle at Northeastern University. My line coach's name was Jack Freeman. Three years, he pushed me constantly. Michael, stay low when coming off the line. Or how to fight off a double or triple team. Till this day, I hear his voice. Michael Santoyan, will you please, will you please stay low, stay low, stay low. I still hear that when I sleep 25 years later. I enjoyed three great years on that football team, earning the Unsung Hero Award my very first season. My most memorable moment at Northeastern was on the football field. It came that first year in the fall of 75. We pulled off an upset victory over heavily favored Boston University in what they used to call the Canine Bowl. It was the Boston University Terriers versus the Northeastern University Huskies. Two dogs, canines, okay. <laughs>